Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will cover convolution sum. Okay. So first of all, you should be aware about the term convolution. So the process of convolution is similar to FIR filtering and is used to determine the zero state response of LTI systems that are relaxed, right? So that is what the process of convolution. So basically it is used to determine the zero state response of an LTI system. Clear? So basically when the input to the system is unit impulse symbolized as x of n is equal to del of n, right? The resulting output is referred to as the impulse response what impulse response fine and this impulse response is denoted by what h of n where h of n is nothing but transform of del of n we already know about this thing right so it is important to note that the system is initially assumed to be in a relaxed state it means it possesses zero initial conditions and we are talking about which kind of system an LTI system here okay so in the last lecture we have already seen that it is well stabilized fact that an arbitrary sequence x of n can be represented as a weighted sum of discrete impulses we already see we already proved in last lecture that x of n is equal to what summation of x of m into del of n minus m okay over the limit m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity clear now when we talk about system response which is basically denoted by y of n so what will be this so y of n is what basically it is what transform of x of n right it is what transform of x of n x of n is given as this formula so it will become what transform of what summation of x of m okay into del of n minus m right over the limit m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity clear this step is clear now if you see here so the system h this particular h system is a function of n right it is a function of n and not a function of m so if it is not a function of m so we can write this particular thing as how can we write this so this will become y of n is equal to summation m is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity limit okay and it is a function of n so if it is a function of n you can write this as x of m into transform of del of n minus m right so this thing we are writing like this why because the system h is a function of n and not a function of m okay so you can write this like this clear so now we are talking about LTI system right I hope you are aware about what is linearity what is time invariance nature so these two things you should be aware about then only you can understand the further discussion so now the response due to we have to calculate the response due to shifted impulse sequence del of n minus m can be not denoted by y of n comma m right so if you talk about y of n comma m so it will be what it will be transform of del of n minus m right so basically this is what this is the response due to shifted impulse sequence clear now we got to know okay boss this is equal to this now for a shift invariant system what is the rule delayed output should be equal to output due to delayed input am i right 
So if that is the case, so you can write this particular thing as so delayed output. It, it means what? H of it means what? H of n minus m, right? Right, boss. And if you're talking about here, the output is H of n, right? So this is what the delayed output. And if you're talking about the output due to delayed input, you have to denote by y of n comma m, right? But here the output is h of n, so it will be h of n comma m. This is how you can denote it, right? Am I right? Now, now further, if you see here, so we already know that this particular thing, what y of n comma m, it means this h of n comma m, right? This is equal to what boss? This is equal to transform of tail of n minus m, right? So from here, this becomes equal to what? h of n minus m. Hope this thing is clear to you. Fine. Now, if this is equal to this, so if you see the final expression now, hold on, please. Okay, so here only we can cover first of all. So if you see the final expression now, which is equal to what? This one, this part. So this we can replace now with h of n minus m. So it becomes y of n is equal to summation of x of m. And this part you have to replace with h of n minus m, right? Where the values of m is from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, lower limit, upper limit. So this is what basically y of n. Final y of n. Now let's move further. Let's move further and check more thing. So for an LTI system, for an LTI system, if the input sequence is x of n and the impulse response h of n are given, the output y of n can be given as just now we see right can be given as y of n is equal to summation summation of x of m into h of n minus m where where m ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity okay where n ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity now the same thing the same thing this is known as what convolution sum and is represented as it is represented as y of n is equal to convolution of x of n and h of n and this sign is what this particular sign is what convolution convolution operation so this symbol denotes the convolution operation so here y of n is equal to this and by the help of commutative property you can write this is equal to what a convolution of h of n and x of n we'll see we'll prove this also don't worry about that so hope it is clear to you what is a convolution sum what is the use of convolution sum so for an lti system if you want to calculate the output the formula is this and it is derived from the by the help of what convolution sum right so that's all about the convolution sum so if you have any doubt in this particular case you can ask in the comment section thanks for watching